Okay, Grish, so that was great, and I really appreciate your time and your effort, And but let's keep going. I want to take this down to another level. Um, you, you're going to show us how to do repartitioning in Aster, which is a fairly complex operation, if I'm not mistaken. You want to take over and, and show us how it's done, sir? Sure. Yeah, you're able to see my screen, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's discuss uh, what is data repartitioning. As John mentioned, this is a fairly important operation to understand, uh, uh, both for both for uh, people that uh, set up the database administrators and people actually that uh, access the data, uh, because that kind of uh, will help you set the expectations in terms of uh, what's going on on the system, what your query is doing, uh, etc. So let me uh, let me uh, explain what is uh, data repartitioning and when it is actually done. Right, so if you remember in the previous video, we talked about uh, computations and operations being done local. Uh, so, but I, you cannot actually do uh, computations and operations local all the time. So whenever you have tables that you need to join uh, based on uh, a key or a column that's not the same as your uh, distribution key for your uh, table, then uh, clearly the computation cannot be done locally. So, uh, for instance, you have a table whose uh, uh, whose uh, distribution key or the physical uh, partition key on which it's hashed and uh, spread into the worker, view workers, is uh, click ID. And say for another table, uh, for the users table, uh, you actually are using your user ID as your physical distribution key, right? So mm -hmm. when you're joining these two tables on user ID, for uh, it's, a, it's, it's a partition key or the distribution key for the user table, but not for the click table. So there is actually some repartitioning or uh, retransfer of data that needs to happen in the background. So uh, it, it's good for you to understand because there is some data transfer, so there may be uh, uh, some, uh, uh, I wouldn't say performance impact, but you actually need to understand that it's uh, not fully local uh, for so, some so of these this, queries. This, this data shuffling is what you're talking about, right? It's where That's network, right. I, network I.O. comes in as a true bottleneck to really um, hampering the, the performance of, of any MPP or any uh, highly distributed environment. Is that accurate? That's that's accurate. So uh, yeah, so it's a, uh, clearly uh, in the newer generations of our hardware and our appliance, we are actually using a 40 gig, uh, uh, 40 Gbps uh, networks. So it's not as much of uh, a bottleneck, uh, maybe compared to like uh, six years ago when we were still using like one Gbps. But uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's still good to understand when your uh, uh, operations are done local and when your operations are over the network. So mm -hmm. so clearly, as I mentioned, the first case uh, of a join. Uh, between two tables, when you're joining, uh, when you're joining based on a column that's not your distribution key or your physical partitioning key, and the second case is uh, whenever you're running aggregates uh, like group by, and uh, say if the group by does not have a, uh, a distribution key as one of your uh, uh, group by uh, group by columns, so you may have like multiple columns or keys in a group by, and say if none uh, none of them is a distribution key for your table then it will actually involve uh, repartitioning of data or shuffling of data, as you rightly said. And then count mm -hmm. distinct. So the count distinct operation, uh, so if you're doing a count distinct on a column that's not the distribution key, that also involves a, a repartitioning of data. Mm -hmm. And then some other compound uh, queries uh, that uses like unions and intersects uh, would uh, require repartitioning too. Uh, however, I want to mention uh, uh, that repartitioning is, uh, its a, uh, even though there is data shuffling and data transfer, it's a fairly optimized operation in terms of uh, the amount of data it actually transfers. So remember that it only transfers the data uh, that uh, uh, that is actually being selected. So if you have like a white table and if you're only selecting like three or four columns, it, it's, it's only going to shuffle those three or four columns across the V workers. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not the entire table. And also uh, most most cases you actually have a where clause in your statement, right? And you have some predicates. So that predicate mm -hmm. is pushed down, meaning that you're selecting uh, a small, uh, uh, you're selecting a portion of your data from the table before it's actually repartitioned. So it's not uh, repartitioning your okay. entire table. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and a quick tip there that I've added. Uh, it may be a fairly advanced tip, but just wanted to let you know that uh, sometimes in group by, uh, especially when you have multiple columns, if you don't happen to have a distribution key in your group by columns, as I said uh, earlier, it does a repartitioning of uh, uh, your data. But what does it repartition on? 
Uh, as per repartitions, it's based on the last column of your group by clause. So if you have a group by A, comma, B, comma, C, then it actually chooses your C as the column to re redistribute or repartition the data on. That's, so, a, that's uh, pretty important, isn't it? I mean, that's a pretty yeah. important statement you just made to actually, <laughs> you know, go ahead. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty important statement, as you said. The reason is that uh, so if you choose if you choose your last column in your group by as a, a low cardinality column, and what I mean by that is something that with a low number of unique values, like a gender, like which has either male or female, right? And if you're uh, if you're uh, repartitioning based on that, then it actually ends up sending all the male records to one V worker, all the female records to one V worker. That actually causes Q, oh. right? So you want something so, with a lot of you want you want something with a high cardinality with a lot high of cardinality things. exactly that's right yeah got so it, that's something that uh, a user can control uh, as part of his uh, query so this is uh, uh, I thought this was a uh, fairly advanced but I think it's it's a important and useful thing to know no I think that's uh, I think it's, I think it's very useful to know Grish thank you go ahead okay. Yeah, so let me let me explain in or demonstrate in a picture what uh, how this repartitioning actually is done in Aster. So the, the outer box or the at the top you see the workers and each of those two there are two workers and each of those workers have two V workers the small box, and we are magnifying those small box uh, uh, the V workers to actually see how the table is actually represented in uh, the V workers. So we have two tables here and the user clicks and then the user zip. So your, both of them are fact tables, and uh, a user click and user zip, both of them have user ID has their distribution key or their physical partitioning key. And uh, as, as we know, Aster uses a hashing algorithm uh, to hash that distribution key when it actually loads the data and uh, sends it based on their uh, hash distribution key. So the, the hashing algorithm is more complex, but just for the simplicity or for sake of understanding here, so if it hashes based on this modulus of 10, right, and then if it is one, it sends uh, that data into one V-worker. If it is uh, two, it sends it to another V-worker, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. And it uses the same hashing scheme for both uh, your user zip and user clicks, right? And so you know that all the user IDs that are present uh, in uh, a user clicks or user zip is actually going to be present in uh, user zip as well, right? On the same VWorker okay. because it's the same uh, distribution key for both. And so when you join uh, this query, uh, a user zip and user click on user ID, you know that the user ID can actually be joined locally within the same VWorker because you know that uh, the uh, or Aster knows that uh, all the user IDs in user click. Uh, are present in on the same VWorker for user zip as well. So it's it's a local joint. Okay. And uh, so as you can see, the 11 uh, user ID here is also present in uh, 11 uh, in the user zip. Say if that 11 uh, click ID uh, was not present here, you know that it's not present on any other VWorker as well. So I'm not saying okay. that uh, the exact set of uh, uh, user IDs are present uh, on the same VWorker. It's either present on the same VWorker or it's not present anywhere. So you know that it can be done locally. So okay. So what you're doing uh, here is you you have mm -hmm. two different tables. You have mm -hmm. two different tables, and they're they're distributed on the same hash key. And right. So what what you're doing is is that both uh, sets of data for both tables have the same sets of data. So when you do join them. There's no data mm -hmm. shuffling going on between not only the V workers but also the workers themselves. Is that correct? Preci precisely. Yes, that's right. So uh, yeah, that's exactly uh, in a nutshell of uh, what this what this uh, uh, query is uh, doing in terms of not repartitioning, right? Now let's take a second example. Uh, so I'm going to use the same tables, but however, I'm actually going to assume the user clicks is actually. Uh, it's not distributed by user ID in this case, but it's actually distributed by a click ID, which is another column in the user clicks table. Whereas for the user zip table, I'm still going to have user ID as the uh, physical partition key. So uh, the, this is a different scenario where the, I'm recreating the user click table such that the click ID is my uh, distribution key for whatever reason. And say if you join these two tables, these two fact tables, based on the user ID, uh, Aster immediately recognizes that for user zip, uh, you're joining on user ID, which happens to be the distribution key, and I marked it on red. Whereas for uh, the user clicks table, 
uh, you are joining by user ID, and user ID is not the distribution key for the user clicks table. Actually, click ID, mm -hmm. the one on red is, right? So however, mm -hmm. so uh, it's, it's kind of transparent to the user, so the user doesn't have to worry about doing anything to this, except that he needs to understand that there is repartitioning uh, of data that is going on, or shuffling of good data that's going on, because the user ID is not, uh, it's not guaranteed to be present uh, in the same way it's stored for user zip, right? So in user zip, it's actually hashed by user ID. So you know that all the ones and 11s are present on uh, uh, vWorker 1, whereas the 22s mm -hmm. and 42s are present on vWorker 2. Whereas for uh, the user clicks, uh, the user ID is all over the place because it's actually hashed by click ID, right? So when you Got join it. by user ID, uh, you see that the 42 uh, user ID is present in vWorker 2 for the user zip, that's the bottom table I'm referring to, Whereas it's actually present on VWorker one on uh, on the on the uh, for the user clicks table. So the, what essentially happens is the user click is re uh, a temp table is created for the user clicks table such that it's uh, this time it's hashed on the uh, user ID. So there's a, a background operation of uh, a temp table that's uh, created with just the user ID as the uh, as one of the columns, and then it joins mm -hmm. this locally on uh, the vWorkers now. Now you know that both this temp table that's been created is uh, local, uh, uh, and it has all the user IDs that you need. So uh, the, the operation between your uh, 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 user zip and your temp user click is uh, done locally, and then the temp user click is actually discarded. So that's uh, that's a fairly uh, complex uh, uh, data repartitioning operation, which the user uh, doesn't need to understand uh, all the nuts and bolts of it, but he just needs to understand that there is some shuffling going on whenever uh, there is a join operation that happens. Okay. That does not involve the distribution key. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the second okay. type that we looked at. Uh, similar, so think of this, uh, even when you do a group by uh, that does not have a distribution key, uh, the, the, the repartitioning happens in a similar fashion. Okay, and now the third mm -hmm. example I want to talk about, which is, uh, a, uh, so we talked about uh, a join between two fact tables, and uh, it's joined by the distribution key on both uh, fact tables. And in the second case, a join between two fact tables, but then the join is, the join key is the distribution key for one, but not the distribution key for the other, which involved a repartitioning. Uh, and in third case, a join between a dimension and a fact table. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so what needs to be understood is in Aster, there are two types of tables uh, that are natively supported, a fact table and a dimension table. So by default, all the fact tables are uh, redistribute uh, no, all the fact tables are distributed by the by the distribution key so when you create a fact table it forces you to specify a distribution key so that aster uh, uh, spreads the data across uh, across all the v workers and workers based on the distribution mm -hmm. key so mm -hmm. whereas for a dimension table you uh, create a dimension table that actually is stored as the whole table on each v worker which means that uh, a dimension table contains all of the data on all the vWorkers. So mm -hmm. uh, precisely for that reason, as a data modeler, uh, you would only create dimension tables for the lookup tables, not for large, super large event tables, but for lookup tables. Uh, yeah, that could, uh, that could be pretty a pretty dangerous operation if it's mm -hmm. a very large table, right? I mean, because if you, have a, you, you would want to make sure that your dimension tables are distributed by replication tables. Are, That's right. You know, under under a certain, you know, like a, under a million records or something of that nature, so that you're not exactly. um, you're not overpopulating your database because you're you can make a big copy of a big table and that would be that'd be bad, right? Absolutely, yeah, uh, precisely. So the the dimension tables are stored in full on each and every vWorker. Uh, so remember that there are six vWorkers per uh, worker node, and then you have several worker nodes, so you have that many copies of the dimension data. And the reason you need, uh, it's uh, helpful to keep the whole copy of that, you'll understand it in a minute uh, when I go over this slide. So okay. most cases in your workflow, you may have to join between your uh, dimension and fact table, right? So when you do that, uh, you, uh, we saw in the previous case that when you join between two fact tables, uh, unless your join key is the same as the distribution key on both tables, there is shuffling of data. Whereas when you join a fact table and a dimension table, you don't have to worry about your join key. Regardless of what you're joining on, your, your uh, computation or operation is going to be local, 
because your dimension table has the complete set of the data for of your dimension data. So whether you're joining it on user ID or click ID between this dimension table and fact table, you're always guaranteed to have a local operation. So that's that's the advantage that the, the dimension table gives you. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so that's uh, that's precisely uh, the types of uh, repartitioning that I want to talk about. When does repartitioning happen, and uh, uh, how can you avoid uh, having a, a repartition? Say, if uh, you have a fairly small table, which is a lookup table, you can actually create that as a dimension table, so that whenever you're joining that with any fact table, you're uh, guaranteed to have no shuffling of data or no uh, no repartitioning of data. Yeah, that's so great. that's. That's uh, that's what I wanted to cover in repartitioning today. Okay, so thanks a lot again, Grish. I can't tell you enough how uh, uh, you know how much uh, this means to me and, and the whole community here. So um, thanks very much, and look forward to hearing from me again. Okay, thank you, John.